On the 2nd of November, 1983, Tottenham Hotspur Football Club played Feyenoord at Rotterdam. The result was Feyenoord nil, Tottenham 2. There's about four Dutch geezers I've seen, whacking hell out of Tottenham geezers, and the old Bill went into the Tottenham on top of the Dutch geezers. Oh, yeah, I just say, you know, the last two years since we've all met each other, you know, we all travelled together before, it did seem a million miles away. God knows what time for a home game on a Saturday. And they travel all the way down from Chesterfield and we get people all over the country and they just sort of typify five or six lads getting together and hiring a car for the day to come to Tottenham, which is their mecca for the day. That's their great day out. You only collect footballers, do you? Oh, it's got small at the back. There you go. Well, Vic takes Gary. I mean, he, he goes all over the country. But Gary enjoys himself. Vic knows the problems aren't as the papers make out. Otherwise, as I say, a responsible parent himself, he wouldn't take Gary. Yeah. Who's this one here? There'll be a big gap in my life, I think, because it just means so much. You know, Saturday really means so much to me because I work hard, even if I say so myself. Um, the job I've got to work on the gas board, you know, and um, the money's not bad and it's. It enables me to, you know, carry on my interest with Spurs. It's, um, yeah, but it's not just the football, you see. It's, um, it's the whole day. As far back as I can remember, um, my grand, my old granddad, he was a Spurs fan. Um, my dad used to tell me about when he used to take him. And um, that, that can be said about my dad too, you know. He took me and my brother. Um, my brother Terry lives in Clacton. He's still got an affinity for the Spurs, but... Um, because he's so far away, he can't come, you know. But me, well, I, I, I um, think it's yeah. just snowball from there, really. Oh, One half Spurs ground, mate, please. Well, I go to every home game, and the father, who's 73, comes along with me. Uh, I suppose getting involved very early, about 40 odd years ago, um, my first visit to White Hart Lane was when the Arsenal and Tottenham were playing on alternate Saturdays. And I suppose my first introduction um, really was seeing Tottenham play and remain with them ever since. During the war, when I was evacuated, I used to come up and watch them every Saturday, home game. My father obviously goes back a lot longer than I do, but... Uh, he goes back to the days of, of Jimmy Dimmock and people like that. My first recollection of Tottenham, I suppose, was um, a gentleman by the name of Ralph Ward, Captain Ralph Ward, home guard, Major Roy White, uh, Jackie Gibbons, Age Gibbons, people like that. I build the place. Nine or seven Got bread, milk and tea, please. Thank you very much. So, would you uh, recommend? Are you coming this afternoon? Of course, yeah. yeah. You're coming when you come. Well, so. I've never seen him lose. You've got to come today. Mm. I mean, I've supported him for years. Plus, uh, Molly, I mean, we've, I've been friends with Molly. Not only because she's a customer, but because she, like, she comes in and chats and what have you. Uh, never seen the Spurs lose. I've done some funny things, some crazy things with the Spurs. Someone said that we wouldn't do blue and white sports sausages, so we've done these pork sausages in, in the blue and white skins and we've had them in the window and uh, I must admit they didn't sell, but Molly ended up taking them to uh, Wembley with Nothing else better to do on a Saturday, really. I mean, there's uh, Sainsbury's. It's not everybody's cup of tea, you know. No, it's just something I've got into um, quite a while ago, and I've rediscovered it in the last couple of years, and I'm having a great time. I, I just like going. I, um, I don't know, the atmosphere is great. I mean, it's not like... I mean, you can watch it on a telly, but it's not the same. I just like going, the people you meet. You know, if, sometimes you get families going, like little kids, um, you know, mums and dads, and we're like, lucky, aren't great. we? You know, a lot of people. We've met a lot of people through the game, and and, uh, and they're great fun. 
Um, I don't see my boyfriends on Saturday. Um, obviously, I'll see them in the morning of uh, a home game, but uh, if we have to travel, um, I'll hardly see him after him when I get home here. Um, and he's very understanding, bless him. Much more than I would be, I'm sure. I wouldn't be, you know. <laughs> I wouldn't. I'm sure we wouldn't, you know. clubs normally I'd say they've been out to make their money and the only way they can make their money is that for sponsorship and things like this is through the fans and some clubs have gone over the top really with the way they've, they've charged fans for, for the privilege of watching them this is the way they treat a lot of people it's, it's a privilege that they can watch their 11 players on the field at Tottenham I feel that they are pampering too much really to the, to the lay, people with money it's, it's a money thing for them now. It really, it's gone over. It's gone really against what football should be. It should be that you can turn up and feel as though you're part of the club. Whereas Tottenham and some of the bigger clubs now, it is the money they're more interested in, how much they can get in, where they can get it from, and the, the fans really are incidental these days. You've only got to look in the car park on a Saturday to see where Tottenham, their interest really lies. Invariably, there's a little group of four or five Rolls Royce. It's just, it's the wrong attitude. It's more money, 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 money. Where is it? We're going to need it. We're going to get it while we can. And it's just the wrong attitude to have, really. They see us every Saturday during the football season. We are the guys who people see cheering the team on, on the terraces, at home games and away games. And especially at the away games. Now, if we can get up out of our beds, no matter what the weather, and follow the club to away games, surely if we get to Wembley, we are the first supporters that should be given tickets. I mean, as I said, 1980, 81 season, I couldn't get a ticket. I tried, but I had to stand in line like everyone else, and eventually I got a ticket. Now, had I not gotten that, I would have had to go into one of the ticket towers. I mean, I've seen guys up here with 50, 60 tickets. Yet yeah, there's blokes in the club you can't get a ticket, even to sit down at an ordinary match. You can't get a ticket, yet you walk outside and there's a tout. You want a seat for today? 20 quid for a £4.50 ticket, or 30 pounds if you want to go into the newsstand. It's all wrong. Tottenham Football Club should cater for their supporters a lot better than they are doing. People just don't realise how individuals really put themselves out for football because they enjoy it, but they don't, don't seem to get anything back from the football authorities. I mean, they, they can see the match, but they're, they're not appreciated being there. Really, they want a successful team. I think the money, they want to be ploughed back into the team. Not on executive boxes, I don't think. It's They want a great side, like Liverpool, really, if it's possible. <laughs> seems to bring less problems, I'm glad to say, for our point of view. Uh, going back uh, perhaps two or three years, we had a large-scale hooligan element here. In fact, we had two murders in one particular, one particular year associated with football outside the ground. But now I think we, it's a matter of containment, a matter of segregation of fans, a matter of liaison with the club, to be honest. Uh, and let's face it, the club holds a responsibility for curtailing hooliganism within the ground.
the hooligan element is there, though, and I'm aware of that. But um, I like to keep a close eye on what he's doing and um, travelling the way we do. And um, at Tottenham, I've got a season ticket. You know, we seem to be quite a way away from that. You know, it's um, we see the, the fighting and all that, but it's from a distance. But happy to say, there's there's not a lot of fighting at Spurs these days. Most of the fighting we encounter is at away games. You know. But I've never done anything I shouldn't have done. I did oh, once. Yeah. You, you know, in the 60s, it was the, they started throwing toilet rolls. <laughs> and uh, we were in the park lane when we used to have it. And I took a toilet roll with me once and I threw it. <laughs> and it didn't go very far. It this reporter in the back because we were at the front. And this policeman came up and told me off. And I've never, ever done anything like that again because I was so frightened. I really was. I was so scared. I thought he'd chuck me out and I'd never be allowed in again. It's more about, I mean, everybody has got aggression in them. And to me, that is a, a good way of letting it out. You know, I mean, if you call a referee or a player of the, you know, the other side a name, they can't hear you. It makes me feel better. And uh, it's all gone in 90 minutes. It, all those nasty feelings that I've got is all out. And, uh, and I've not hurt anybody by doing it. Monkey jams, whistling. It's all good sport. I don't think anyone should pay too much attention to that. The players don't. It hasn't stopped them. Oh, if he's on the other side, you know, in good fun, give him a little bit of barricade. Yeah, you know, try and get him off his try, especially if he's going to score. You know, do everything you can to stop him scoring, because once they score, it means we've got to score twice to beat them. When I was young, I asked my father all about it. He taught me football and told me all about it. And I failed to see a lot of difference in them, except they don't put enough energy in it, to my mind. They were hungry, well underpaid in those days. Now they've got too much. They do play a bit harder than they used to, but when you think it all out, Years ago, there used to be terrible lot of kicking and punching and biting and scratching. You don't see so much of it. Don't like you see. Don't see a lot of dirty play. It's like hooliganism. I've never seen it. I've never seen any hooliganism. I've travelled all, all over with the Spurs, broad as well. I've never seen hooliganism because I don't go into it. I don't chase after it to look for it. Do you think the newspapers and the television chase after it? Yes, I think they do. Somebody does. It must be them. It isn't the people. We used to go away with Fred ha John Harris abroad for years and years, and doing very, very well in all the different countries. We never knew what the trouble was. The only bit of hooligan I ever see is on the buses when they're scrambling going home, and then I have to, or somebody has to shelf shout for a policeman to get them off before they sit on my lap and smother me in the bus. I've heard that you're a bit of a hooligan with your umbrella, is that right? Oh, yes, I would. I'd fight for myself if, if I was in any trouble. I did at the Wembley one year. They started scrambling around me, so I got hold of my umbrella and started smashing them with it. Yeah. One man grabbed it out of my hand, threw it and broke it, so that was the end of that. I cleared off, <laughs> hit myself. supporters of this club run their own trains and coaches to all the away games. The football club gives us no help, so we steward the trains and coaches ourselves. It builds the whole good atmosphere for the whole day. The away games are completely different. The fans do enjoy themselves more and get more involved in it and sing and laugh and joke, which we can't do at home because we're all split up at home. It's the same, same sort of people every other week going away, especially when we go on the train. And we have good fun. It's an added part of the whole trip, really, is, is the train journey, because we have a couple of hours to socialise, really. It's not just to sit there, get into the football. It's, it's, uh, we're playing cards, laughing, joking, talking stories from the week previously. It's all on a Saturday now when we go on these trains, and you consider the value of a train to British Rail, and they really let us loose on it, because they know that we will behave and the train will come back in as good as order as it went out. Yet the football club just don't want to be involved with their true fans, really. I mean, these are the ones that go everywhere, and they don't want to be involved with those because it's a little bit of too much hassle for them. Come on, come on, this. Big money coming out now for the cameras. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, you support Tottenham, and you follow the team. No matter where they're playing, the Spurs fans will turn up. The Tottenham support will turn up everywhere, and everybody knows it. Oh, 
No, we play Barcelona away, right? We were queuing up for tickets, and these two blokes in the daily in suits, right? And we're queuing up, and they walked up, and they said, Boy, lads, tip us the week when the fighting's going to start. We told them to f They said, come on, lads, cameraman's here. Fighting's going to start. <laughs> Let us know, <laughs> and we'll be straight there on it. It has got something to do with mass hysteria, I suppose. I mean, I've never been in trouble with and football before referee. Wednesday. And just Wednesday, yeah, I, just, I just got carried away. Everyone was jumping on, so I went on and I got collared. I mean, I didn't go on the pitch on Wednesday with the intent of hitting someone or causing trouble. No way, not at all. But, you know, it's just silly, I know. <laughs> Uh, give me a few bruises around the head and no, they were just generally we're gonna teach you a lesson, you won't be coming up here again, that sort of thing, you know. It's it's been a comfortable night though, no, didn't I mean, it? It wasn't bad. I mean I'm not saying I got roughed up or anything, but it was just a bit bit you know, a bit unpleasant, I suppose. And you were left at three o'clock in the morning? Yeah, three o'clock in the morning, I was turfed out to the high street with about four hours to kill, you know. It's, I mean, I asked to stay overnight. <laughs> I asked for a bed. Yeah. Didn't get one. <laughs> offered, offered, offered to pay for one as well. The police are just as bad as the away fans. The way they herd you about like cattle. Because if you know them, make a train load, say 300 people on a train, walk on a two foot wide curve. And start whacking you if you walk off the curb. Just obviously use a little bit of tact when we do search people, obviously out of the public eye. We also do it for their own protection, of course, for the protection of the general public. But it is for their own good at the end of the day, obviously. If there's a family come up, dad, father, son or whatever, they usually get straight through with no hassle or no searching at all. But obviously, a group of jobs that we call them, then they might get a little bit more attention than the, uh, the normal support that we hope come down here and cause no trouble whatsoever. You've got to bear in mind that, that only a half a dozen or a handful of, of uh, fans can cause problems. 99% cause no problem whatsoever. So I think on that basis, you, you're just looking for the odd one that's out to cause hassle and trouble for themselves and anyone else in the way. You just treat it sometimes like animals, and there's always the odd one or two amongst any police at football that just want to try and mind fans up a little bit. A little shove here and a little shove there and a, a bit of swearing here, you do this, do that, and you only walk into a game of football. Beginning of the season. Now, we was not walking along with the escort. We was walking on the opposite side of the road, and there was three of us. And there was a police van right by the side of us going down the road, and the, the, the escort was on the other side. And the door kept opening. Want to rare, John? Want to start, John? In a Birmingham accent. And this is coming from the police van. They kept opening and shutting the door. Want to start? Want to start a rare? Come on, John. Come on, John. Started opening the door, like banging the door into us as we were walking past. Provoking us to have a pop at them. Just so they could nick us. And one copper like says, let says, says the animals, didn't they? So they all started going, meh, moo, moo, and the stars on the road. Great. Oh, right, they did, though, didn't they? Great right, funny. Yeah. Well, I could say I've always gone all wrong at the place. Everywhere we've gone, I've gone all wrong at the place, except a coffin tray. What happened there? When I had that too, when uh, this policeman, he was agitating all the time, standing down in front of us, agitating. And uh, he took one of my boys out. And he said he was uh, swearing and disorderly, and, and that boy wasn't doing a thing. When we watched at Tottenham, when we used to stand in the old enclosure, mm -hmm. and there was a crowd of away supporters on the other side of the other side of the park, and uh, Tottenham support was all shouting over at him, like jeering at him. And the old Bill moved into the crowd, and they nicked a bloke on crutches, an old man of forty odd, and a little kid of about thirteen. You know, and everyone's shouting the insults at the away supporters. And, they, and look who they nicked. An old man of 40 and a little kid. And we just, everyone just stood there laughing. Like, you know, what's the point of nicking them? Many a time I've been pulled out by the police and they've said, you've got a choice, you either get nicked or you get an hiding. And I prefer the hiding than a nick, because it's cheaper. And I've, I've took enough wax off of them. They go there for the wax. A lot of them do. We were standing on the stage and waiting for the train to go out, and the crowd got restless behind a small opening. So 
So on came the policeman with the dog, and the next thing I knew, the dog had sunk its teeth in my arm. So I said to the couple, you're a bloody fool. You said more than that. <laughs> oh, no, I don't use four little words, but I did say that. I mean, I'm probably as bad as everyone else, because when I read a newspaper, I stop and, and, and read something that's sensational. But when it actually happens to you, and you know that it's just a bunch of lies, then it means something completely different. And I really feel for people when they have lies told about them in the papers. But you can't help believe it. If you take a paper like The Sun, it's spread all over the, new, the front page or the back page. And they don't just make it a little corner. It's right, it's right on the back page, isn't it? I mean, you, you always sort of expect an editor of a paper to be a member of the MCC or something, so they don't really want to upset their own sort of patch. They're not football all the time, and you hear the, the chanting, especially some of the league games, and it's always, oh, that's that football element, that cricket matches. You'll find that football supporters in lower divisions are completely different to us. They go for different reasons, I think, because occasionally I get to go and watch a, a midweek game down at the Orient, and the sort of people I see there are totally different to the, to the people I see at Tottenham. Because they're not, the club is not a business, it's, it's there for pure football. I think that sort of friendliness, it seems to have gone out of the club. I mean, now they think, all they think about is how much money they're going to get in. I mean, that newsstand, even though like, we sit in it, it's not really built with the ordinary average uh, football support in mind, is it? Well, I imagine for the, for the lads that really have been bored all during the week with nothing really to look forward to and with a little bit of dull money, I don't even know what they get these days, it's not a great deal, but they find ways of getting to their football because that is their highlight of the week. Oh, uh, oh, so, 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 like Stevens is out in the park and I watched him for a couple of minutes today and he was hiding behind the other rubbish, Spurs right. players. He was, ve he was very, very poor. He I... didn't seem pro to pull on the weight shirt of Tottenham Hotspur. But spot. if you're watching it and you're spending your money going, you want to see him play like Roberts and Perryman. Giving it a roll, you know, it's right. You know, you stand it, it's freezing cold, you know, and everyone's doing their thing. Yeah, but uh, when the team comes out, it's all worthwhile. They're playing some superb football. And away they come again. This is Dyson. Smith moving up on the right wing. He's cutting in. He's calling for the ball. But Dyson's got another. He's got another with three minutes to go. And that's it. That's what Tottenham have been striving to win. And they've won it. And surely now a lap of honor. Villiers. And still Ricky Villiers. What a fantastic run. He scored. Amazing goal. The year of the cockle. Well, I've got a very soft spot for Tottenham, you know, it's round about this area, but uh, I've got a soft spot for Arsenal as well, but that's in a private place. <laughs> <laughs>